What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be discussing a Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers injury updates in which I think depending on who plays and misses this game between the Bulls and the Lakers will ultimately determine who the favorites in that game is. Now, I personally believe the Chicago Bulls will be considered the favorites in this game. We beat the Lakers out in LA. It's not like they had nobody playing for them. They had a very strong team there, ready to play and everything like that. But... Of course, a lot of people, just because it is the Lakers, will consider the Lakers a tough team. And I think they are a tough team. And as we know, with the Chicago Bulls, we can beat and we can lose to any team at any given time, depending on how well we play. So if we provide the consistency on the defensive end, the tenacity on the defensive end, with our ability to hopefully make some shots, we could be considered the favorites to win this game, as well as just, again, the favorites in general to beat LA twice in this season. Before you started, please like and subscribe to The Bulls Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls and whether or not you believe we are considered the favorites to win this game. And as well as what do you think the, like, the potential score could be in this type of game? Do you see the Bulls dominating the Lakers? Do you see the Lakers coming back with a vengeance in this game and everything in between? Now, personally, I would say that this game is going to be a little bit more personal. Again, I did not expect, I guess, the... A personal game that we saw out in LA. I didn't expect it. Again, I understood Patrick Beverly was on the team. He was a recent uh, Los Angeles Laker and stuff like that. But it felt like things just got a little bit... Uh, again, it's just unexpected. I don't care if it's personal or not, to be honest. If Patrick Beverly has some personal beef with the Los Angeles Lakers, that's on him. Obviously, he plays for the Bulls as well. So the Bulls have to back him up and, and play with their hearts. Play their hearts out for Patrick Beverly. Play the hearts out for the Chicago Bulls. And most importantly, you got to play your hearts out in this game at home. Last home game, we got absolutely decimated by the Philadelphia 76ers. The last thing this Bulls team needs is to come back to the United Center with a lot of the crowd buzzing. It's going to be a big game in terms of atmosphere. It always is when the Lakers come to town. It is what it is. And you need to play with your hearts. You need to play with a competitive spirit. You cannot get blown out again at home. And if we do do that, then I'm sorry, there's no defending this team. No matter how good or bad they're playing this season or post-All-Star break, you can't get blown out at home. But nevertheless, it's an injury report. So let's discuss the injuries. Let's start off with Javonte Green. Uh, the ESPN injury report lists him as out, but underneath it, it says he is questionable to play against the Los Angeles Lakers. So again, I just will assume that he's going to be out of this game. I don't think he will play. I would love to see Javonte Green play. Do we necessarily need Javonte Green to play? We'll look and energy wise probably if we need more energy in this team Javonte Green will be the guy that we always normally turn to that's what he provides for this team but again if everybody's playing at their sparkling best I think we could be fine without Javonte Green returning or playing in this game I should say but hopefully again I'm not surprised by all of these I guess probable questionable outs doubtful or with Javonte Green because again he came back from a pretty big injury he had surgery he's recovering from a long-term injury so I'm not surprised whatsoever I just hope things can get I guess healthier and better maybe by the time the play-in kicks around but there's still a little bit of ways away from that seven odd games to go we'll wait and see how that ha uh, what happens there Alex Caruso listed as questionable against the Los Angeles Lakers with his foot injury not surprised here as well didn't play against the Clippers. A lot of people have said if he did play against the Clippers, we would win that game. Personally, I don't think so. But look, it's all up to perspective. I just think the Clippers made a ridiculous amount of shots. Some of them were easy. Some of them were just, I can't believe they made that shot. And sometimes that's how the NBA goes. Doesn't matter who you have on the court. It could be the worst team in the NBA. Could be the absolute best team in the NBA. Um, if you're just making ridiculous shots upon ridiculous shots at times... It's just no defending that. Sometimes you just can't stop what other teams provide. And I just felt like that was the case with the Los Angeles Clippers. But maybe if Crusoe played, things could have changed a little bit. But it is what it is. But there's no denying his importance on the defensive end. I think he showed it in that Lakers game as well. And again... Always want to see a guy like Alex Crusoe play against the Lakers. A former Laker, won a championship with the Lakers. Lakers fans love him. And I'm sure Lakers fans, deep inside of their hearts, wants to see him play, even if it will come towards their team in a bad way, let's say. If he has a great game against the Lakers in Chicago and the Bulls win, 
I still think they'd want to see Alex Crusoe play. I just think he's a fan favorite over there. He's a fan favorite here as well for most of us. And that's really into it in terms of new injuries. Of course, you still got Justin Lewis that's out. Still got Alonzo Ball that's out. Um, so that is interesting as well. But the Lakers still have some injuries in their own right. And this is why, depending on who plays for the Lakers, depending on who plays for the Bulls, could determine the advantages both teams have. Because they've got some serious injuries if those guys do miss the game. So... Let's start off with Anthony Davis. Listed as probable for Wednesday's game against the Chicago Bulls with um, right foot stress. And again, I expect Anthony Davis to play. I know he is considered injury prone and stuff like that. He gets memed on a constant, regular basis about his injuries. It is what it is. Look, the only way to overcome these things is to not be injury prone. You've got to prove your health at the NBA level. So that's what Anthony Davis needs to do. Does this game necessarily change the narrative? No, it doesn't. If he is having, uh, I guess, a right foot stress injury, whatever the case may be, and he misses this game, well, I think people will come to expect that from Anthony Davis. It is what it is. Um, I was very surprised with how he played in that first game against the Bulls. I thought the thing that I think the Lakers need to bring to this, uh, to bring to the table here, they're going to play with a lot more physicality. I felt like their entire team did not play physical against the Chicago Bulls. We were the physical team even though we're a bit smaller than them, but we were the physical team, and I think that helped and benefited us. I think if the Lakers want a chance to win this game, they're going to have to match our physicality or improve upon it. We'll wait and see if that happens, but Anthony Davis out for the Lakers. We'll wait and see, or probable, I should say, for the Lakers. We'll wait and see if he ends up playing. D'Angelo Russell with a hip injury is listed as probable to play against the Chicago Bulls, and again, that's an incredible asset to have back onto your team if he is able to play. And again, it could be someone that can hurt the Lakers, but for the most part, he's helped them dramatically. He's a shot maker, sometimes a little bit too greedy in terms of his shot. We saw that with Minnesota. I think there's a big reason why he got traded, but with the Lakers, it's a different story. For one, Lakers need shooting. Lakers need scorers. So D'Angelo Russell fits right into that category. And LeBron James is a willing passer. Their whole team is, I guess, designed to be scoring around LeBron James. That's what they want at the end of the day. So I think he fits in. And honestly, if he plays well, we've seen him destroy the Chicago Bulls this season, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, he's had some great games. And he could potentially be in for another one. Hopefully he isn't. Uh, even if he does play, I hope he doesn't have a great game. But yeah, we'll wait and see what happens. Obviously the big one here, LeBron James is listed as questionable to play with his foot injury. Again, I was extremely surprised at the fact that he returned as quickly as he did with that injury. He was listed as doubtful at the time. Didn't really, No one really mentioned LeBron James coming back until a couple of hours before the game. LeBron James is back and stuff like that. It's incredible to see. Again, he is a freak of nature, isn't he, LeBron? It just, nothing seems to keep him down for long. Even if he does have a lot more injuries at the back end of his career compared to the beginning of his career, in the middle of his career, and the prime of his career, even these injuries that he has now does not keep him out for that long. So, again, he's a threat, isn't he? He's a great player, one of the greatest we have ever seen. He is a threat. I don't care what anybody says. You could be the most diehard Bulls fan you've ever been in your entire life. I understand a lot of people will never compare him to Jordan. I don't care about that debate. That debate, for me, non-existent at this point in time. When we focus about the Lakers, that player is a threat to the Chicago Bulls. And if he plays at the highest level he can, we are in danger of that. So... The Bulls got to do a good job defensively again. And I think we did okay in the first time out against LeBron. We'll wait and see how we go in the last one. And last but not least, uh, Mo Bamba is out. But he's been out for a while, I believe. And uh, Scottie Pippen Jr. is listed as day-to-day. -day. So there you go with the Los Angeles Lakers injury updates as well. That's a lot. Look, a lot of them are questionable and probable. So you expect all of them to play, I would say, in this game. But realistically... If there's a chance that Anthony Davis doesn't play, D'Angelo Russell doesn't play, LeBron James doesn't play, alongside with the other injuries they had beforehand, that is a massive advantage to the Chicago Bulls. And at this point in our season, you've got to take any advantage that you can get. So we'll wait and see what ends up happening. Hopefully the Bulls can win the game regardless of who approaches with the Lakers or who approaches with the Bulls. But we'll wait and see. I'm expecting a physical game. I'm expecting a, really, a little bit of a rivalry type game. I'm expecting a personal game. 
And I just think it's based off of what we saw in that first game with the ejection as well of Vucevic. Obviously, Patrick Beverly's antics, stuff like that. Anthony Davis comments uh, to Patrick Beverly wanting to eliminate them from the playoffs, stuff like that. There is a lot that will go into this game. We'll see who comes out on top. I said it in the last video, the Lakers may want that revenge that they should rightfully want. But the question is, can they get the revenge? You can want revenge all you want. Some teams are just not good enough to get it. We'll wait and see if the Lakers are one of those teams or not. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next Chicago Bulls video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care and peace.